morning all. I'm Gubbins, I have horns for eyes, and I figured I would introduce myself today by going through my fountain pen collection. I'll be starting off with my favourites and moving on to some that are less than my favourites. And if you're a fountain pen person, you'll probably get a good grasp for the kind of person I am. If you're not a fountain pen person, then uh, maybe don't watch. This hobby of collecting them is addictive. <laughs> so, uh, I won't dawdle. Let's just get straight to it. Here we have pen number one. This is The Nautilus by Narval. Uh, this is the first and the original model. I think there were three colours. And this is the base. Uh, bronze Corridoras. I think this pen's just steampunk as fuck. I love it. Obviously, it looks like a submarine, <laughs> which is just so stylish to me. It's made out of ebonite, so it's really comfy to write with. And it's steampunk as fuck. When you have a darker ink on here, I have a pink ink at the moment, so it doesn't really show too much, but the nib creep on it looks so good. I can attach a picture of that. And, you know, it's not the highest quality pen in the world. It's kind of janky. The clip kind of just falls out of alignment all the time. It doesn't line up with the portholes. The end cap for the piston can be pushed out of alignment. <laughs> it's a janky pen, but it's got so much character. And for that, I just love it. Next up, uh, close behind, these are, in my opinion, the best pens that I have. That is, Japanese short long pocket pens. Uh, I have two from Platinum, and I think these are pretty much works of art. The way these go, uh, you take most of the cap off, and you add it to the back of the pen, and all of a sudden, you have a full-length pen, and they have these beautiful... I don't believe these are inlaid. I think on three of these pens, these are inset nibs. This is my best writer. It's a 14 karat uh, soft fine, and it is bouncy as heck, and it's remarkably pretty. It's got these flower designs on it. And the cap is just quite... <laughs> Look at that. Uh, this is an 18 karat one. It writes a lot finer, and it's got more line variation, but the it's not bouncy. So I prefer this for drawing. You get much crisper lines, and I use it for most of this art in the background. I, uh, this is my preferred pen for drawing. Um, this is the Sailor <laughs> Vintage uh, from 65. It's got some interesting design cues. I love the green on the bottom. The clip is not quite so sophisticated, but this has a beautiful pen. Um, nib. This has a beautiful nib. This is, I believe, the only inlaid nib. It's not particularly fancy, but this thing does line variation and pressure like no other. It's such a fantastic pen. And to close off this little quartet, we have a modern Pilot E95S. Uh, this is the American market one, so you've got the E. This one's got a little scuffed up, because I use this thing a lot. I take it out of the house because I'm confident in replacing it. I don't really have the money to replace it, but... You know, it's still in production, and this has a huge nib, 14 karat, and... I love this burgundy, and ivory colour. We're not going to get much of that in this light, I don't think. 
but these are some of my... <laughs> I'm up there as my favourite. And I think they are the best pens in terms of quality and writing feeling that I have. Next up come the capless pens. I have a pair of capless pens. One is a Pilot White Kasuri. And this is just such a high quality pen. The construction is awesome. Disassembling this thing and using the piston. Brilliant. Let me get you a close up of the sound. Awesome. Uh, this is a Marjon A1. It's the textured versions that came out relatively recently. And I love this pen. It's not as high quality as the genuine article, but it's heavier, which I quite like. And the texture of it is also really nice. So I'm going to probably buy a few more of these. <laughs> I bought this initially which is what convinced me to get the genuine pilot because I don't have a standard pen grip and I was really not interested in buying a capless without trying the grip. So I got the Marge on A1. It turned out the grip wasn't obstruct oh the clip wasn't obstructive to my grip. And I thought, heck yeah, let's go for the genuine thing. The nib in this is far and away better. It's also a stub nib, which isn't available on the Marjons. But this is not a bad pen. For the money, this A1, especially the metal textured ones, they're not as heavy as the untextured ones, but they are heavier than the capless. And it's right in that sweet spot for weight for these pens. Um, you can probably hear the difference if I go up. If I go slowly, you can hear that spring. And compare that with the Genuine Pilot. You can, you can really feel the difference. Um, the Pilot's spring is precisely crafted for the pressure you need. Whereas it feels like the Marjon spring is just whatever they had, which fits. Which isn't bad. You actually get a much more considerable click with this in terms of just like total effort and the feedback from the weight of the pen. But the Pilots is much more clean and satisfying. You don't feel nearly as much until you hit that last part. So, both of these are fantastic pens. I just drew on my hand. <laughs> I, I highly recommend the both of these. Alright, coming up next, the Pilot Prera. This thing is cute as heck. I cleaned it just yesterday, so I haven't inked them up. But, this is a satisfying pen. For its price, it competes with pens like three or four times more expensive in terms of just the quality, how it feels in your hand, and the writing experience. They put so much effort into making this nib just as good as possible. The capping mechanism is satisfying. I'll do that up close for you to listen to too. This is my recommendation. If you're a beginner, you haven't tried fountain pens before, unless you've got giant hands, this will be the perfect pen for you. Like, if you buy a Kakuno, it's got the same nib, but I think just the general feel and the quality of a Kakuno, you know, you'll move on to other pens. This is a pen you don't move on from. I pretty much exclusively use this with Robert Oster's Cherry Blossoms, since that's a scratchy ink, and this has a smooth nib. So it's pretty much permanently housed in this pen. It's awesome. Highly recommend. 
Next up, Pen BBS. This is the 456. It's an affordable pen for how high quality it is. Um, this acrylic is just so pretty to me. In real life, it looks like candy. I want to lick this pen. Uh, this is my first and only vacuum filler. And it's got quite a nice nib. It's a waverly nib, so it bends up a little right at the end. It's also relatively dry, so it's similar to pilot nibs where you want to use wetter inks in here. Um, I have Eidelstein Jade in this at the moment, and it writes beautifully. Like the Prera, this thing competes with pens many times more expensive than it in terms of quality. The only downside to Pen BBS is they do their production in heats. So if you want a certain acrylic and it's not available for the pen you want, you have to wait a while for it to come back. So I kind of saw this and I jumped. Okay, next up, Mahjong One Side Mini. I love this pen and I am definitely going to be buying more of them because they're available in transparent acrylic and they look so good to me. I bought this one because it was affordable <laughs> at the time. There was a good sale and I wanted to try it out. This pen is so tiny, like a little chapstick, and then you screw on the back and suddenly you have a big chunky pen. The nib on this isn't the best, but it's also not the worst. I've tried, I would say this beats Kaweco, Kaweco in terms of all well, their quality control and in terms of how they write. This is just such a fun pen. I carry it around in my sketching kit because it eyedroppers just so much ink. So when everything else runs out, this is the pen that will always have ink for me. Um, and genuinely, if you ink this up with a premium ink, like a Roshizuku, I've got Compeki in here, this thing beats most other like pens of the price that I've tried. I say that like compared to mainstream things. So, you know, when you're picking an affordable pocket pen and you have to pick between the Sport and this, I would pick this every single time. Next up, Hongdian N7. This is the Peacock variant. It's very hard to get the color of this to accurately show up. And also just to get into focus. Uh, I might have to do a proper review of this when there's actual daylight. But this is just such a beautiful pen. Uh, it's a piston filler and it sells for less than a Twisby. You have a little ink window, and the part that I love about these pens is they have what's called a long blade or a long knife nib. It's similar to Sailor's Naginata Togi nib. This is really great for writing down Japanese or Chinese characters. I use it for my kanji, my hiragana, my... Uh, Hansu, and it's so good. I bought it twice. This other pen is a grey one. Uh, I had some dramas with this pen, getting it from a seller, but they stuck with me, and after a long time, I finally have a functioning pen. And man, this this is just... They're such good pens. So. This one I use for writing, and I put my writing inks in it, but the fact that you get such good line variation with the nib, I bought another one just to use while drawing. And I love them. Okay, and this is kind of a runner-up in my favorites category. It's a Tombow mechanical pencil. I use this in my art all the time. I include it in my collection just because I like it. I believe this is a Tombow Zoom. It's the 
aluminum one that they have a few zoom mechanical pencils. I don't know the specifics, but this thing is awesome. It's like really heavy. It feels the same as a fountain pen. Um, there is an eraser nested in the back, which I love for art because when you're an artist, you don't use erasers to correct mistakes. Erasers is something you go in at the end to put highlights on a drawing. So as an art tool, I really appreciate this over a mechanical pencil that, um, sorry, I had this out of focus the whole time. I, I really prefer this over other mechanical pencils. The, it posts and the button cap is really easy to push when posted. It's hard to use unposted, but that's how you advance the lid. You also can hold it in and push that bad boy back in. The only downside I have for this is that this is a slightly rubberized material that I think is like painted on. And this will probably get sticky and gummy and wear off over time. But, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a fantastic pencil. It also has a really nice capping. Let me do an up close for you. It's just so muted compared to the plastic snaps that some of the others have. I'm a huge fan of Tombow. Their water brush markers are awesome. And that's what kind of sent me into fountain pens to begin with. I was like, how do you get this but more refillable? That led me to fountain pen ink because it's water soluble. And that led me to fountain pens. So I have a lot to thank Tombow for. I haven't really branched into their fountain pens, but I'm content with the other art supplies that I've gotten from them. So there we go. Um, I think going forward, I would love a uh, Pilot Custom 823. That vacuum filler just got me peeping. Other ways, vintage pilots are something I haven't tried yet. I'm really scanning eBay for a Mew or an M90. Those are kind of my grail pen at the moment. And I think eventually I will try and branch out and spend a bit of cash on one. It's just a matter of one showing up on eBay at a time where I have the money to spare. Um, also, vintage elites, which I've seen there are some with music nibs and script nibs. I am super excited to try some of those out. So that's probably where I'm going to be going, along with <laughs> a few more Mahjong pens, because like I said in my rant, they are really innovative, great pens. Along with Pen BBS, I think Marjon and Pen BBS are going somewhere. They are really pushing the industry forward at the moment. They're carrying in terms of developing new stuff. So that's where my collection is going to be going in the future. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and have a lovely day or a nice evening, whichever. And... <laughs> it's nice to meet you.